today we're speed running Duolingo, the French language course. I grew up in France and I spent most of my life in France. I don't know, I never took the French course. As you can see, I tried a bunch of different languages, but French is gonna be the first time ever, so we'll see. Of course, I already know some French. Let's check my level. I am Mary. Ooh, I'm getting assessed right now. Let's hope I get a nice score. Yay, 100 XP. Let's start from section three, traveler and get you speaking French in no time. Why you mean section three? Hmm. So I've got all of the sections here and they put me in section three. That's gonna take forever. I'm gonna go inside the champion section and section nine. Let's see what it looks like. Pass this test. Okay, to set up. Oh, is this really her first landing? Il faudrait peut-être laver cette... Mm, that's a weird one. Ah, uh, I didn't see the drawing actually. Elle ne sent pas la rose is kind of this French expression where you want to be like, oh, you don't smell like a rose. It means you stink. Basically, you stink. In English, it's called a stylistic device where you say, oh, you don't smell like rose. It actually means you stink. The French people love using that. They use it all the time. So this one is a euphem euphemism, I think that's the word. They also use it the other way around. So when something is cool, like if you want to be cool, like you're not going to say, oh, this is awesome. I love it. You're going to be like, mm, it's not too bad. C'est pas mal, c'est pas mal. Or c'est pas mauvais, or c'est pas mauvais. It's kind of like, eh, it doesn't taste bad, but people would actually use that to say it's good. You know, it's like amazing, let's go. Uh, <laughs> this is extremely French. Uh, in fact, nobody really likes paying their taxes, but yeah. The French people, every time you have a serious conversation with them, even if it's like at a Christmas table, someone's gonna say, oh, did you see the taxes this year? Did you see how they were raised? Renforcé au talon. <laughs> This is so specific. I don't know what it is with Duolingo and socks. A lot of French native, they have a lot of issues with the grammar because it's very specific and there are so many different rules. So for example, when you see the accent on the A here, so many people I know, they still don't know when they have to put it, when they don't have to put it. It's a struggle for everyone. So don't worry if you're struggling right now. <laughs> Some people, they've been speaking French every day for the last 50 years and they still don't know. Est-il possible de rendre ces... Uh, see, I, I exactly, I made this typo right here where C or C, and in the case that it's uh, possessive, his items or her items, so you would use with the S. Otherwise, if it's something that you're just designating, then you would use the C. Est-il possible de rendre ces articles? Okay, still have two hearts, it's not too bad. I unlocked section nine, champion. Let's go through that one. I think I'm just directly gonna jump to the last unit, which is unit 39. Really dramatic, but we're gonna see how it turns out. Let's go. Long live, vive. Vive la France. Everything is well, I have it under control. Hmm. I know it's the situation. I have the situation under control. What? Oh yeah, because I don't know how to speak English properly. Sorry. Exprimez-vous. Express yourselves. Oh my god, all the French teachers, they would, ah, they would be so aggressive. It's cool. And there's always that shy kid in class and the teacher would be so aggressive with them. It's like, exprimez-vous, enfin. C'est pas possible. Le temps avait l'air certain, mais ça s'est couvert. What? Oh, I only have one heart left. That's bad. Terrible. Ah, one more mistake and it's over. I need to be careful. Nous essayons encore. Nous essayons encore. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which word she actually said. I feel like it's essayerions. Nous essayerions encore. This word, because she's saying essayerions, but usually you would just say essayerons. But I'm really, <laughs> really afraid to submit that one. Usually you would just use that to say in the future we would try again, but okay. Oh, they still put an I, but whatever, it worked. You would sit here. Tu <laughs> this, this verb is really hard, like as a French native, I don't know how to write it. Like I pronounce it all the time, tu t'asseillerais là, but I have no idea how to actually write it. Tu t'asseillerais là. Wait. What? No. I refuse to believe that one. 
that's really really unfair i'm, I'm really pissed right now because there was no way of knowing if they meant to like the singular form like informal form of you or if they were meaning vu the word that i use are actually correct but there's no way of knowing without the context here. Okay, I lost all my hearts. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I guess I'm gonna wait until they refill so I can take the test again. I'm very humbled. I'm not really humbled because I know I know the French, but this is really, really frustrating because come on, Duolingo, this doesn't make any sense. Hmm, I have my hearts refilled, so I'm gonna give it another go. Rien n'a progressé, je vous dire. This actually wouldn't happen in France. <laughs> you cannot fire people. That's a real problem for company owners. Startups as well. It's really, really hard to fire someone. There's a lot of laws and protections for employees. Actually, that's really nice and protective, but it means that you can basically never fire an employee or you need to have millions of reasons and you need to be ready to fight legally because it's pretty much going to happen if you want to fire someone. Interesting, interesting. So you would probably never pronounce that sentence in your life. The more exercises I take right now, the more I realize that the, the languages that are used in this course are very formal. You would pretty much not use it in real life. It's 100% correct, but it's correct for a formal use or a written form of French, but you wouldn't use that kind of saying in the street. Oh, you actually hear that kind of sentences on the VF movies. So usually when you watch a movie in French that has be tra been translated to French, you have that kind of sentences that nobody actually uses in real life. So a lot of young French people are actually making fun of that. And there's a lot of TikTok accounts where they just like, acting as if there were a voice actor in one of those movies. She's my bridesmaid. Elle est mademoiselle d'honneur. Uh, no! That was actually my last one. Really? C'est mademoiselle d'honneur? Why? That doesn't make any sense. Nah. I don't know if I have to go through the whole unit to get then to section 10, but we'll figure it out. Stay sharp by practicing your five weakest words. What? <laughs> Since when? Les rats du labo ont créé leur syndicat. <laughs> this is hilarious. I'm Les sorry, what? Du labo ont créé leur syndicat. This kind of shows off that <laughs> the image of France is like syndicat. It's kind of like this asso association that will provide you with protection because like the french people they're always complaining about everything and they always need legal protection like if they're employees or if they have are living in a household like shared household and it's like there's so many syndic everywhere and they're always like on strike the lab rats have created their union les fraises auront bientôt mori <laughs> les fraises auront bientôt mori that's actually wrong. Why are they saying it like that? Les fraises auront bientôt mûri. You don't say mûri, you say mûri. Les fraises auront bientôt mûri. Auront bien mûri. No matter which French accent you have, you're not going to say mûri, you say mûri. Mûri. First lesson, done. Oh my god. Just realized now that I have to go through all of the lessons here. I'm too lazy to do that. This is bad because it means I actually have to speed run all of these lessons. Okay, okay, let me do it. I'll do it. I'll do it for the for the video. Je me fais larguer, puis mes vacances sont retardées par la grève et l'hôtel perd ma réservation. <laughs> et maintenant, la grêle, c'est c'est la cerise sur le gâteau. This is very French. <laughs> You would hear this a lot in France where people, I mean, a lot of French people are just complaining 24-7. So this is the perfect sentence. Even if they go on holidays, you know, it'd be like, oh, and the weather was so shitty and this happened and the hotel was not nice. This is the cherry on top of the cake. Ridiculous. <laughs> Je suis énervé qu'il parte sans m'attendre. Je suis énervé qu'il parte sans m'attendre. So you probably heard about that. In French, we use a lot of verlon. Or maybe you didn't hear about that. And Verlon is kind of like <laughs> putting words upside down, especially the younger generation is using that a lot whenever we're talking to our friends. So in Verlon, if you were saying the same sentence, you wouldn't say, je suis énervé qu'il parte sans m'attendre, you say, je suis vénère. Because it's not énervé, it's vénère. And you take the last syllabus and you put it in front. So yeah, vénère. 
And a lot of French people are saying vénère all the time. Just like, je suis vénère. Je suis vénère. I love this word. <laughs> it's really funny for me because it feels like Duolingo's take on French is just like, they don't like to work. They have unions everywhere and strikes. And they go on holidays a lot. La France ne se limite pas à Paris. <laughs> This is really funny because there's a lot of debates in France. There's a lot of hate between Parisians and people that live outside of Paris. So the Paris Parisians actually call them les provinciaux. It's kind of like, uh, les provinciaux, they're not good enough. And yeah, there's a lot of fights between the two. And some people I know, I grew up in the countryside. I know a lot of people that were like, no, nah, I'm never going to Paris. I'm never stepping a foot in that city. I hate the Parisians. And a lot of Parisians, they're, when you get there, they're like... Oh my god, so you come from the countryside, crazy, crazy, you're such a provincial person. And it's just like, come on, come on, France is not limit limited to Paris. Oh, I finally found the, the accents on this keyboard, that's good. French people whistle a lot when they talk. Sometimes you can whistle to replace words. I'm not really good at whistling, but for example, you'd be like, T'as vu les prix? Ils ont... It's more like, wow, like the prices increase so badly. Mon père ne voit plus ses potes du lycée. They use pot now. Wow, we're getting informal. Putain, c'est trop long, j'ai juste envie d'arrêter. Ça fait une heure et demie, plus 45 minutes, ça fait trois heures que j'ai envie de faire ça. I think I'm done now. Wait. No thanks. Okay, unit review. This is my last one. Profitez-en. Ça passe tellement vite. Enjoy it. It goes so fast. Quickly. Ah, hallelujah. Let's see. Let's see what happens now. Continue. Oh my God. Congrats on finishing the Duolingo French course. Okay. That's it? That's it? Really? No nice animation or nothing? I finished the course. All right, I finally finished the last run, but my phone decided to crash during the last unit. But overall, I think it was a fun experience. It took close to three hours to speed run everything. I would say that Duolingo is not that bad if you want to practice your French, if you want to get started. I think the vocabulary and the types of sentences that you're going to learn are going to be quite useful in your daily life. <laughs> I mean, the whole part of like joining unions and like complaining, I would say people use that a lot in, the, in their everyday lives. But there's still a big difference between written French and spoken French. And you're going to get that once you start uh, talking to some people or talking in the streets, like the, the level of written language into a lingo is very formal like the the language is formal and you would not necessarily speak like that when you're in the streets or when you're talking to your local bakery owner or yeah to a shop vendor or something like that in order to get past that i think you just need to get into real conversations with french speakers so get on an app uh, that allows you to do tandem speaking or like go directly out in the street and start talking to the people i mean overall it's great and i think they didn't do a bad job of course you're probably gonna have needs a lot of support to learn all the vocabulary and especially the grammar and the syntax of the words. It's really hard uh, in French. A lot of native French speakers, they still struggle to write the, the words the correct way. And I would say the only way to get past that is just to do a lot of exercises, uh, revisions, and read a lot. Read a lot of books. Um, also read the subtitles when you're watching a movie or a TV show in French. So... I mean, they get in, in your brain and you're going to see a difference pretty, pretty quick. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and feel free to comment, like, subscribe as usual and goodbye.